much for joining us here today. Our special guest, as he's had a lot of collaborations with artists such as Tiesto and Vinny Benassi. Um, he had his own solo album, Simple Modern Answers, back in 2013. But he's probably best known as being one third of BD Mac. Christian Burns, thank you so much for joining us here today. Hey, Amanda, how are you? It's a pleasure. It's ple I Thanks for having me on. I am awesome. And I know that we're going to delve into mental health. I know that's the topic. Before we get into that, I just have to know how on earth you have managed to stay so gorgeous these past <laughs> decades. Because I have to admit, I still kind of have a crush. So whatever um, your secret is, share that with uh, Lots of late nights in the studio. That's what it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the secret of youth, huh? Lots that's of the nice secret. Things. Stay up late. That's it, guys. Good for you. Awesome. I, I feel like that's the exact opposite of what they've told us all our lives. So maybe that's what we've all been doing wrong all this time. Yeah, that's it. You've been doing it wrong. Forget the moisturizer and, and <laughs> all that stuff, all the creams and potions. No, just stay up late. Baby Mac was absolutely crushing the scene back in the early 2000s and I, but Baby Mac will always hold several very special places in my heart. Uh, my mom and I bonded over uh, the band so much. It was my first concert she had taken me to, as a matter of fact. <laughs> this is young me, everyone, little 16 year old wow, me. Wow, that's a blast from the past. Amazing. <laughs> absolutely Amazing. blast from the past. Uh, but my I mean, mom I've, I've I lost that hat. I've lost that hat. I remember wanting a hat like that so bad <laughs> after I met you. I said, it was so <laughs> cute. I just want Christian's hat. But I remember my mom and I bonding so much over BB Mac that, in fact, her last voicemail to me before she passed in 2007 said, I just heard the Sweet Potato song, which was her nickname for the song Back Here, because she swore it sounded like you guys were saying, Here I am, instead of Here I am. <laughs> we actually were. Shh, don't <laughs> Get them to eat their vegetables, right? But, um, yeah, I, I remember that being her last voicemail to me was, I, I'm listening to the Sweet Potato song and I thought of you and I just needed to call you. And uh, we, I just, every time I hear any B.B. Max song, it always makes me feel close to her again. So. Oh, well, honored, honored, honestly. Thank you, thank you for that, um, for those memories. But also um, back in 2018, shortly before you guys were getting back together, you were doing a couple shows here in the US and stuff. I was on the ledge of a Canadian hotel room where I almost lost my life to suicide. And the BB Matt concert was one of those things, I've never talked about this or truly about this, but it was something that really gave me something to look forward to. I felt close to my mom. I felt, okay, this is weird that after all this time, BB Mac has been radio silent and all of a sudden they decide to come out with, with new stuff. I just, I felt very connected to my mom during that time. And it gave me something to look forward to, gave me a way to, to connect with her and, and, and feel her love and support during that time. So again, thank you for that too. No, well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you're here and we're having this conversation and you know, it's, um, yeah, I mean, you should be very proud of yourself that you made it through, you know, tough times in life, you know, um, but you're here. So that's the most important thing. Um, absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. When BB Mac broke up, I know it was amicable. I know that you guys didn't have any hard feelings or anything, just wanted to do your own projects. But was there some mental health shifts in you to go from playing all of these award shows and touring with NSYNC and selling out all of these stadiums on your own to then just kind of doing your own thing and, and stepping back away from uh, the limelight? Did that have an effect on your mental health? Yes, it did. I mean, it wasn't the really, um, you know, it wasn't the reason why we, we split up, you know, it was just it came to the end of its journey. We actually, we, you know, we're back, you know, we're, we're enjoying ourselves now making lots of new music. Um, we just released Power Station last year. We've got some amazing new music to come as well um, this year. But yeah, I think it was, it was, you know, we were, we were, we worked really hard, you know, for three years solid. It was, it was I think we did like 178 flights in one year. Wow. Um, you know, we were all over the world, all over, you know, different continents, um, working long hours, you know, I'm talking like, you know, 15 hours a day or more sometimes. And all these highs as well, you know, from, from being these three lads from, from a Northern town in England and having this, this passion for music and this this dream, you know, uh, from going through that through, through that and and then working really hard um, and then getting to the point where yes, you okay, you now you've been signed to a record deal, and then from there the, the success, you know, which was which was amazing, you know, we, we we sold millions of albums, we had a number one in America, you know, we were on all these TV shows and 
Jay Leno and all these massive, massive shows working with brands like Disney. And, um, you know, it was a lot. And we loved it. You know, we had a great time. But it, towards the end of it, yeah, it took its toll on me. And I think physically and mentally, especially. And I, I started to have, um, you know, I fell into this kind of depression. Um, I can say that now. Absolutely. I was starting to have anxiety and, and panic attacks. And it was really scary time for me because for the first time in my life, it was, um, you know, it was something I wasn't in control of. So this, I wasn't used to this because I'm a bit of a control freak. So, Same. <laughs> um, you know, and, and it, it was a really scary time because I, I wasn't in control and I thought it was going, I thought it was going crazy. And, uh, you know, I had everything. I had the, the fancy cars and the clothes and the houses and everything else. And it was, uh, you know, on paper, you'd say, you know, <laughs> pull yourself together, Christian. What's wrong with you? You know, you've, you've got all this stuff. Um, you know, all the success and you're doing something you love. What, why are you waking up every morning so, you know, upset? You need to just, you, you'd be fine. People don't really understand and, and I didn't understand it. And that was the scary part. I didn't understand it, you know, at the time. And, um, you know, the reason why I'm here today, the reason why I'm talking to you, Amanda, is because like last year, um, last year for a lot of people, I think it's, it's been a, a really challenging time with monumental changes and um it's been tough and it is tough you know and for me personally it's been a bit of a reset for me so it, it's made me realize you know kind of the things i've missed and the things i don't miss um you know the people in the place this is i don't miss or i do miss you know and it's it's been it's been a time of reflection for me and also, you know, a, a, a time to learn for me. And I, and I think I've figured out what, what's important in life and what's not really. I hate to sound so deep about this, but this is why we're here. Because I said to myself, I said this year, I'm said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, I, it's a big problem, mental health in the music industry. You know, there's a lot of it goes on. And as, from being from somebody who's been, you know, in the music industry for over 20 years, and gone through an episode of this, you know, I think if I can, if I can share my message and if it can help one person, um, whether they're in the music industry or not, I just want to bring more awareness to, you know, mental health, especially in men as well, because it's, um, it's something that's brushed over a bit and, you know, and the worst thing you can do is not to talk to somebody yeah. or not to get help. So, you know, that's, that's the reason why we're here, Amanda, you know, and, and, and that's the reason why I'm, 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 I'm having this conversation with you. So anyway, so get back to the, to where I was at, you know, I was feeling this, this crippling anxiety and this crippling depression. And this was going on for, for months and months. And I was, I was having panic attacks like on stage at, at shows, like during a song. And um, I, I just, I couldn't control it. You know, I was every morning I'd wake up and I'd be in tears and I'd just be so, so down. And um, I couldn't see any, any light at the end of the tunnel, I thought this is it now, this is gonna be, it felt like it was gonna be forever. And um, it, it was only after a while, now it could have gone two ways for me, you know, it could have gone one way and, and, and thankfully I'm here, I'm talking to you. Um, and I think what it was, was, you know, I was, I thought asking for help was, was, was a weakness or people would judge me, I think I was, it was a failure or it was a weakness, you know, and, um, so I kept it kind of inside and, and, and that was the wrong thing to do. I realized that now um, I did for a few months and then I decided to start to tell people and I got help. And, you know, as soon as I spoke to somebody about this, I spoke to somebody who's educated in mental health and somebody who could explain it to me. Um, as soon as I did that and, you know, they explained to me that, you know, after all these these highs of doing these sold out concerts and selling millions of albums and, you know, touring with these huge mega stars, like all these highs and all this success. And it's like anything, you know, there's, there's always got to be, you know, it's like when you have too much sugar and there's a sugar crash. So once I realized that, um, yeah, there's, oh, there's a reason why this is going on. Um, you know, I, I started to get better and it was, you know, it didn't happen overnight, but over the next few months, uh, you know, I, I remember one day waking up and feeling like for that day, I think I had like 10 seconds where I felt normal and I forgot about this crippling anxiety. And that 10 seconds turned in, um, you know, a minute, 
over the weeks and and then it turned into more and it was that little hope that little glimmer of light i got which just grew you know and to the point now where you know i can sit here and talk about it i'm in a a place of strength about it, you know, and I can I can talk to you um, with anxiety and depression just on a one-on-one -on -one basis when I've spotted somebody and I've seen a few alarm bells and I've just, hey, are you okay? You know, are you okay? And there's no one here, by the way. <laughs> but, um, you know, and, and, and you, you just can tell when you've been through something like that. So I've helped people, but I thought, you know what? This is important uh, more than ever, especially with COVID, the music industry and people in the music industry and people all over the world are struggling with mental health. So, you know, I, I wanted to just, my main message is Amanda, that it's, it's, it's a strength to, to ask for help is actually a strength and, uh, and, and you should do it and you need proper help. If you are going through this, you know, seek medical advice or a therapist, or, you know, if you want to start off with speaking to a loved one or family, um, a member of family or a friend, it really, really does help. And I think for the, in, the, in the beginning when I had it, I didn't tell people how I was feeling and it was just kind of, then it was a bit weird and awkward and, and it was just, then that was making me feel worse and giving me more anxiety. So, you know, my advice is to anybody out there, um, you know, first of all, it does go and it, there is hope. Uh, it doesn't last forever. There's a way out. Um, but, you know, asking for help is a strength. So it's the best thing you can do um, is to ask for help because there's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Sometimes we all need, we know we all need a bit of help sometimes in life. So, you know, that's why I wanted to come on, Amanda. I know you reached out and you said you wanted to do an interview with me and I checked out your, your, your page and everything, what you wanted to talk about. And I thought, yeah, of course I'll go and do it. So, so yeah, so that's my, that's my story about, you know, that kind of episode in my life, which was, Wow, it was like 2003, um, you know, it was, it was a long time ago now. So that's why, uh, you know, I can talk about it. Um, and yeah, and uh, hoping that somebody, if somebody is suffering out there, if you are suffering, if it's you, um, go and get help, go and speak to somebody, just do it. Yeah, and there's so many options, whether like you said, it's a professional or a loved one or even someone on social media. You can reach out to me, you can reach out to someone in a support group, just someone. It's very important to not keep that inside because like you said, that does create so much more anxiety. And I think it's interesting that you say that you felt like it would have been a shame, you know, to to share that publicly yeah. back then. Just like Lance from NSYNC was afraid to share his sexuality back then because he was afraid of how the fans would judge him. And of course, everybody received it super well. Uh, I just think back to that what time. A guy. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him a few months ago, actually. Top That's guy. awesome. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it was. It was that. It was. It was that. It kind of you think people are going to think I'm weak. People think I'm a failure, you know, and it's, it's, it's all nonsense, you know, uh, people want to help you, you know, and there's no need to struggle, you know, no. struggling is an option. You know, we all go through pain and that's inevitable in life. We all go through pain that, you, you know, that's just part of life. Um, but struggling is optional you know, so I, it, I actually made a video about that not too long ago, because people tend to get stuck in that rut. And I think of it on kind of an interesting level, because had you come public about your struggles back in 2003, I know personally, I would have went, oh my God, Christian's going through the same thing that I'm going through. And I already, you know, had this connection with BB Mac and with uh, your music and stuff and with my mom. So I feel for a lot, I, I can't, imagine that I would be alone. I imagine there would have been plenty of fans that would have went, oh my gosh, he's feeling what I'm feeling. I'm not alone. I'm not crazy. So sharing your story not only helps you, but it could help somebody else too. If you share it with a friend and they go, oh my God, I was so feeling all these things and didn't want to talk about them because I didn't know who to talk to. There's no shame in sharing our stories. And I think it's kind of funny. People will always say, oh, you're so brave. I don't want to be considered brave. I want it to be considered normal for us to just say, hey, I'm struggling with these thoughts or feelings right now. How about you? You know, I think that yeah, that's how it should totally. be. Totally. And I think, I think also, you know, for men, um, there's a, there's a, there's a big, um, you know, it's a taboo thing for men to admit that they need help. Um, and I'm just, you know, if there's any guys watching, just like it, it's, it's, it's okay to ask for help and you're any less of a man at all, you know? And I just, I guess it just needs more awareness. And like I said, if this can help 
one person, then it, it's worth getting the message out, you know, um, because you know, knowing that other people have been through the same thing as you. And when I spoke to somebody about it at the time, not only did she explain what was going on, but she also explained of other cases of people and how common, how common mental health is in the entertainment industry and in the music industry. And, and uh, you know, I will do whatever I can do to help make more resources available, make it more aware. I think record companies should do more and have stuff, you know, more resources on hand for artists um, and not just the big artists, any kind of artist. You know, we're quite sensitive people as artists. We're quite creative. Our brains are very, very creative. So I think we may be susceptible to some things like that. So I think, you know, it's the responsibility of, of uh, you know, these major labels and other entertainment in the, uh, you know, companies to, to kind of keep an eye on that. Um, I know it's gotten better, absolutely gotten better in, in recent years, but I still think there can be more done. Absolutely. What would you suggest that they offer that they do if in a perfect world, um, if they're offering more support for uh, artists and whatnot? I, yeah, I just think to point, to, to, to point people in the right direction to somebody they can speak to, you know, maybe a therapist or something like that, or even literature or videos people can watch. Or, but, but I think the, the most thing, you know, the, the best thing would be to be able to put them in touch with somebody who, you know, they can either you know, have a hand track with them or whatever, but somebody that they can have a relationship with their artist to look after their artist and just check up on, you know, everyone's at the gym every day getting on these six packs and these abs and stuff. But, you know, you've got to look at this as well. So, you know, it's not just your physical health. You need to look after that and, you know, make sure you, make sure you are, you know. And it, it's tough. I think it's a bit high, more highlighted because at the time as well, you know, I was drinking a lot, you know, I was a young lad in a band and having great time. So, but then it, when I it started to get sick, I was drinking just to mask those feelings, you know, and that's not good either. So, you know, I think that people need to be, um, there needs to be more awareness about, you know, the struggles that artists can go through um, and, you know, the connection with mental health in the music industry, um, for sure. And they tend to write off a lot, you know, if, if an artist does start drinking or starts falling into substance abuse and stuff, it's just, oh, well, he's just a rock star. He's just a party person. They almost normalize it to a certain degree that that's expected of you when you're famous. And I think that support for the addiction aspect of it would be really a positive step in the right direction too. Absolutely. 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 You know, it's, it's, it's very important. And it's like, you know, it, it, it's, it's it gets dangerous when people are drinking to mask something else, you know. Um, it, it's a lot being that successful and, you know, and being flung into the limelight like that um, and, you know, physically exhausted as well. So I think, I just, look, I just think there needs to be more awareness of it. And this is, you know, this is helping. This is getting the message out there. And, um, you know, if anyone does see this, then great. And, you know, hopefully they'll take something away from it. And it will be the message of go and ask for help because that's yeah. totally okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We're taking, yeah. Just taking one step. That's all it really takes is one step in the right direction, whether it's reaching out, whether it's saying, I'm going to do this healthy thing for myself today. I know for me, I kind of had to start restructuring my lifestyle to be able to move forward because I had a really, really, really unhealthy lifestyle that was not at all conducive to mental health. And I knew that there was a certain level of me reaching out and there was a certain level of me taking personal responsibility to say, hey, are the actions I am taking, the habits I have, are those good for my mental health? Because they were not. Absolutely. And I think, you know, once you're you aware of that, you, you, you're halfway there. You, you can do a lot to help yourself, you know, be kind to yourself, you know, um, eat healthy, get some exercise. And, and, and also, you know, the, the people and the circle you, you hang around with, it's a big influence on everything in your life, the things you watch on TV even. So just, you know, be always aware of this stuff. Um, and it's, 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 it's a lot more difficult now, and, you know, I think because of social media as well and, and the pressure that everyone puts themselves under, um, you know, it's, it's like you're under a microscope and, you know, it can be hard. So I think more than ever, you know, and especially with COVID and everything, um, yeah, it, it's tough out there. It's tough, you know. So just do everything you can to, to you, you know, to be kind to yourself. So, you know, I do, I do morning routines. I do exercise. I, you know, I eat. We can tell. Great. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I, but it's, it's all, it's not just for my physical, it's all for clarity in my head as well. So I think it's really important that you give yourself, you know, you give yourself the best shot 
being okay by by you know change, looking at your lifestyle and looking at your habits and and your your circle. Isn't it funny how so many people forget that their brain is part of their body, that it's still part of physical health. Our mental health is still part of our physical health because the brain is still attached to us, right? It's yeah. funny how people forget that. You were talking about having anxiety and panic attacks on stage, and I'm all too familiar with anxiety and panic attacks. I developed a full-blown anxiety disorder after my mom passed away, and I was having panic attacks every day. What did it feel like for you? Did you know at the time you were having a panic attack? Because I know the first time it happened to me, I thought I was dying, and I was just yeah, I mean, the first I time to I had hospital. One. Yeah, no, the first time I had one, I was in a, it, it was in, a, I was in a, a Chinese takeaway queuing up to get some food. And uh, I just started, my heart just started racing and then my vision started going and I thought it was just going to collapse and then it didn't. And then I was just white and shaking. And I was like, what, <laughs> what was that? That was weird. Um, so I went back to the hotel without my Chinese takeaway. Um, and I just called my tour manager to the room. I said, I said, Malk, I said, I don't know what's happened here. I said, I don't know. I don't have not a clue. I don't know if it was, I don't know. I said, so I went and got checked out and, and, you know, they said, oh, I think it's anxiety. And I was like, right. And I'd never heard of it because no one really spoke yeah. about it or panic attacks, honestly, like 20 years ago. So I was like, thanks oh, for making okay. me feel old, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you feel old, what do you think I feel? Um, so, you know, I was like, all right, okay. And then what happened is it just started to come had it again and then that was when I was like ah this is a thing it's not going it's not just a one-off you know and then I started to have the antip anticipation of oh I was going to have one and that was what was making me really down as well um but yeah it was you know I had one on live tv once and I look back at the interview and I look a bit awkward and stuff but no one would know you know because again you know I kept it inside and obviously I, I couldn't do anything but I, I did ill because we would have cancelled, you know, and it was like, it was just a weird period of time. But yeah, um, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how, how it feels when you can look back on it like this. Because I remember feeling at the time, this is going to be forever, you know, this is, this is not going to go. And like now for me to talk to you and just, and I'm just thinking about it now. And, you know, there was a time when I was scared of thinking about it or talking about it because I thought it would trigger it. But you get over it. It absolutely goes and you know you've just got to have faith in that and know that it does go so th that's why i'm in a place of strength now and i can talk about it and you know i have been for many many years and helped you know quite a few people but you know this is going to amplify that message i suppose and hopefully help a few more i think that is such an important thing because when you are in that state it feels all consuming it feels like you're going crazy it feels like you've just completely snapped that something's changed in you. Like you said, that you're never going to be better again. I remember feeling like that too, that I just thought, this is it. My mom died and I am losing my mind and now I'm just broken forever. Yeah. And I felt yeah. that way for a very long time and just spiraled downward from there until, um, ironically, when I was on the ledge in Canada, the only thing that brought me down was a song coming on at the right place in time. That's what brought me down. And that just kind of awakened me into this revelation of going, whoa, I was actually going to do that. I was actually that far down that this was going to happen. I, oh my God. And it was, it was just such an eye opener, you know, but once I started moving forward, I'd, I'd gone to therapy and stuff before and it just hadn't helped me. And I think it was a mixture of they were really pushing medication and I don't think that works for everybody. I think it's great for some people, but I don't think it works for everybody. And I just hadn't found the right uh, professional. And I think that's super important. And people underestimate the importance of finding someone that you connect with and you mesh yeah. with that matches your values, that matches, you know, where you want to go and what you want to do. I think that's super important. Absolutely. And I think it's very important that you get professional help if you are in that situation. You know, it's okay. You can talk to a friend, but that then you should next is get professional help. Um, because, you know, it, it, it's, you know, so your friend will help you by just being comforting and stuff. You need professional help. Um, there's no way around it. You know, it's going to help you. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you're here and that you, you know, you chose that option and choose life. Uh, you know, so yeah. Good that well, we're having this conversation. Who knew that a few years later I'd be sitting here talking to one of my teenage crushes, right? That was worth, that was <laughs> worth go. stepping down for. There you go. <laughs> You were saying that you had 
you know, went through the phase where you were drinking and stuff. And of course, to a certain degree, that does happen, you know, when, when you're in that kind of situation. So I think that there are certain people, my mom was a recovered alcoholic and she was one of those people that she had to cold turkey for quite some time. And she ended up having a beer or two with my dad when they got older, but she had to cold turkey for a while because she just couldn't wean off her. She, mm -hmm. she was pretty bad. But I think that there's certain situations I still have, you know, a glass of wine with dinner uh, a couple times a week or whatever. My rule of thumb, and maybe you have kind of a different rule, but my rule of thumb is to never ever drink as a response to a stressor. So if I'm feeling upset, I'm feeling stressed out, not to drink, to try to deal with that. If I'm drinking because I just want to relax at the end of a long day, or I just, you know, want to have a drink at dinner, I just want to socialize with some friends. I feel like that's a whole different story than I'm feeling like I need it to cope with my emotions. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you're grabbing that, you know, it's, it's just to mask something else. So you've got to get to the root of the problem. And whether it be go and do some meditation or some breathing exercises or go for a walk even, you know, that's much better than going grabbing a couple of bottles of beer or a bottle of wine or, you know, whatever. I think so, your entire yeah. next album just needs to be nothing but guided meditations because I would listen to that <laughs> all day long. Yeah. I know there are so many fans that would just listen to that all day long. Christian, get on that, please. Yeah. But there were, there were so many people, okay. you know, <laughs> there were so many people doing Yeah, that. no, I'll, I'll put that one in the idea box and I'll see what I can do with that. If not, I want, I want some guided Christian Burns meditation. <laughs> okay. But I, 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 there were, you know, several people that had fallen into that during that time in that partying phase. And nobody thought back in the late nineties, early two thousands of, Oh, boy bands, you know, partying, nobody correlated those two. But when it comes to a lifestyle, that's going to be super stressful like that, it's going to happen. I, I mean, people are going to find whatever way they can to cope. What do you think if you could go back now and talk to younger Christian, what would you tell him? Uh, prior to this starting what would you tell him to do to kind of avoid that burnout well we see that's the thing you see i wouldn't have told him anything because i mean i would have said uh, i mean at the time we we wanted to do this work you know what i mean it, I mean, it wasn't like someone had a whip and they were whipping us we right. wanted to do it but it was exhausting and you know sometimes when you want success you've got to work really hard so i think it's just it was unfortunate you know it, it's very common and it happens to a lot of people in different um, genres of work and industry it's not just musicians so you know we, we were hard working we were really hard working um, guys and I guess you know I, 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 that was that was one of our qualities which we did work so hard so I, you know I can't I wouldn't say don't work too hard now you know and um, because it, it you know we enjoyed our work I think it was just unlucky and I think it was it, it wasn't really it was, it wasn't all the work. It was, I think it was the more the highs and stuff, you know, and that comes with any success. So I think it was just, yeah, it was just unfortunate, you know? Um, so yeah, I maybe would have told Christian, young Christian not to get that tattoo. It was awful. I've had to go over Do it we want to know where this tattoo so, is? It was on my arm. It was on my arm. Okay. So yeah, I would have said, Christian, don't get drunk and go down Sunset Boulevard and get that tattoo because it's crap. Um, so, so what that is, is I got a tattoo on Sunset Boulevard too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I wonder if we went to the same tattoo shop because I ended up getting a tattoo on Sunset Boulevard a couple of years ago too. It was my last I don't one. know. This one was just all like, it had all like, that yeah, was rubbish. Are you going to get anyway, it I've got it covered over. Okay, that's You've done good. an amazing job. Um, yeah. Was, is there anything that you would suggest to someone who is either going through a major life change like you had in that shift or who's just feeling, you know, that they're in that phase where they're having to work really hard. Is there anything you would suggest to them to cope and get through that time in a healthy yes, manner? I would definitely say, and, and you know, it's okay doing all this, but just look after yourself. Like I said before, you know, eat healthy, um, get some rest sometimes, get some sleep, um, you know, drink lots of water, do some exercise, you know, think about things like meditation, uh, these are all things that, uh, you know, they just help help you a lot. You know, be kind to yourself. And um, yeah, I, I would just say definitely lifestyle choices. So always look at that and uh, see where you're at and see what you can improve on in that, you know. 
That was pretty much, I think, what saved me, to be truthfully honest, is I had to start making lifestyle changes. I ended up uh, developing this online course that kind of goes through what I call the five puzzle pieces of happiness, because there's certain things that do have to be in place. You know, you can go to a therapist all the live long day, but if you're not doing the work yourself to, on top of that, in tangent with that, I feel like it's not going to be as effective as it could be, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um. What did you do really to manage the anxiety at the time? How did you have anything to help yourself down from a panic attack or anxiety attack? Um, I did. I did. So I tried a few things because I must have had, I don't know. I had loads of them, about 30 of them or something like that over the, the period of this six months. Um, I used to start singing. That used to help me because I used to find it like if a bit. Yep. Um, so I'd start singing. That would help. Um, but sometimes you just had to go with it. I'd have to just let it go, you know, and just ride the wave and, uh, you know, let it pass. Um, but I kind of got used to, it, it's weird, but I kind of got used to doing that. And there was like, I, they were, they were tolerable, but they were, yeah. they were still awful. Um, but yeah, I think breathing, taking some deep breaths can really help as well. Just sit down if you can take a deep breath. Um, try sing, try that. Nobody wants to hear me you. sing. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, just find somewhere comfortable and just, you know, deep breaths and let it pass. Once you do realize, you know, after the first time it happens that you're not dying, please, for whatever you do, do not Google your symptoms. Do not, do not Google. It's a terrible idea. You'll, you'll come up yeah, with all sorts of Don't do that. Things. Don't do that. Get professional help. Don't yeah. start looking on Google because, you, you know, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You can just yeah. put in anything like a sore finger and it'll say, oh, you've got a brain tumor. Yeah, it's like you know. It's, so it's like I wouldn't Google stuff. Just go and see a doctor. Go and see. A I won't. I won't name any names or anything. But my friend that had helped me get ready for the BB Mac concert when I was a teenager, and she knows who she is. This is advice from Christian. Please listen to this advice. Stop googling yes. your symptoms all the time. You do not have a brain tumor. I promise. Yeah, yeah, that's a bad idea. Just go to the. Just go to see someone. I remember doing that though. I remember that I would go, oh my God, heart palpitations and I Google it. And then all of a sudden I'm convinced that I'm having a heart attack, a stroke, and I have six different types of cancer. Yeah. That's not going to help your anxiety. No, it's not. It's not. For me, actually. So, yeah. Don't take any notes of that. You know, just, just get professional help. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the only answer. For me getting through the wave, I found that water really helps me. The drinking water or running my hands underwater, <laughs> running my feet underwater, that really helped me just get through it. Um, and there's water available pretty much anywhere. You know, that's some place, something that you can just walk into a place and say, can I please have a glass of water at a fast food restaurant? <laughs> yeah. That was something that always helped me. Water is, is, water is, I call it miracle juice. It's amazing yes. stuff, water. You know, I drink a lot of it. It's really good for you, for everything. So yeah, I, I, I try and drink as much water as I can. Me too. Um, but I didn't back then, you know, it was more right. beer. So that was very That's the problem. Not the anxiety. <laughs> yeah. But now it's water and a bit of beer. A little bit of beer. A little bit of beer is okay as long as you're not yeah. feeling emotional you when can. you're there. Exactly. Everything in moderation. That's my yeah. thing. But yeah, it really, it really helps because I feel like if you can, can reconnect with your body and you can be mindful again and go, okay, right now I'm still okay. I'm still breathing. I'm still here. I'm still alive. I'm just yeah. struggling for a minute. I've been here before, or, you know, if it's your first time, plenty of people have been here before. I'm going to be okay. And that's just yeah. a thing that I, I will sit there and just go, I'm okay. I've been here before. This is uncomfortable. And usually it'll pass. I, I sometimes will time it. I'll just put a timer on my phone because it'll pass within 10 minutes or so. It and does. It will pass. You know, it passes. Long. You're not going to die from a panic attack. So just... Just ride that, ride it, let it ride out, you know, but you are going to be okay. So just let it pass. Um, and, you know, just put yourself in, in, start the repair of yourself, you know, go and see somebody and you might need medication. You might not need medication. You might need therapy. You might not, you know, so just the start of that. And if you're aware of that, just go and get some help. You know, that's my, <laughs> that's my big message is it's, it's, a, it's okay to ask for help and it's the right thing to do. And we all need help at some point. Absolutely. And if you have your phone on you, just pull up and listen to about two or three BB Mac songs and that'll get you through the 10 minutes of yeah. the panic attack. And I mean, listen. what's your favorite BB Mac song then? What's your favorite BB Mac song? You know, I still have a soft spot for back here just because of me, my mom and my connection to it. Classic. It's a classic. Yeah, so classic, but I really <laughs> love it. I loved wolves off of Power Station because uh, the wolf was always my kind of spirit animal. I always had a deep connection with uh, with wolves. So uh, when when I saw that song came out, I went, 
holy crap, I feel like my mom is just sending me all these messages right now because, you know, I, the, the album came out at just, or you guys were touring at just the right time, promoting the album at just the right time. The song came out at just the right time. Uh, so I, I, yeah. I definitely, I definitely love Wolves off of the new album as well. Yeah, it's one of my favorites off the last album, actually. We, we wrote that one with Johnny Radford, good friend of ours. And um, yeah, love that one. Love that one. My good mom, one. she really, really loved Again <laughs> off of the first album because she loved Mark and the Penny Whistle. So that was, that was her uh, favorite song. Along yeah, with. God, Again, that was, um, yeah, it was the first one. Wow, I've, yeah. I'd never heard a Penny Whistle until then. And I don't think I'd ever heard a Penny Whistle on anything else. And it's just <laughs> such a pretty sound. Yeah, no, Mark's, listen, Mark's got full of talents. He plays the bagpipes, he plays, he plays all kinds. He's, he's such a talent, multi-talented guy, Mark. But yeah, I remember that we did that one. It was something different, you know. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little track, nice little track. And again. it's kind of hidden because it's toward the end of, of the Sooner or Later album. So it's kind of hidden at the end. But I will say BB Mac was one of the, especially uh, the Sooner or Later album, was one of the third, like few albums that I could listen to from beginning to end. So don't tell Lance next time you talk to him. But even with <laughs> NSYNC, I loved NSYNC. I, I was totally an NSYNC gal in the 90s. But Oh, they were brilliant. They, NSYNC were brilliant. They were, but there was a couple brilliant tracks. There's a couple tracks that I just go, and we're going to skip that one. And we're going to skip it. And not because it was a bad track. It just didn't jive with me. But BB Mac, uh, said friend that I, that I mentioned earlier, she, she, she to this day goes, I will never forget your poor mother having to listen to BB Mac over and over and over on our you know what? You're not the first person to say that. So many people have been doing the tour, you know, when we've been doing the recent shows and stuff and, uh, People have been bringing, you know, the mums with them and stuff. And if you, well, you know, I was just force fed it down my throat, but then I liked it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. <laughs> Funny story is when we went to the concert, it was me and my mom, uh, which this concert, I was 16. And she was probably the only older person. And Mark literally kind of stopped before the song pointed at her and laughed. And she talked about this to the day she died. She just went, I remember when Mark laughed at me because I was just that old lady at the pop concert. <laughs> But we went to Mark, Mark was always laughing. We, we, we had such a laugh on stage, you know. Um, we still I... do. We still do. Whenever I go out with with the boys, we never stop laughing. Honestly, it's it's been so much fun going out on the road again after all these after fifteen years. But it's know, fun like... for us to to listen again <laughs> to all. Of well, them. we can't wait to get back on the stage as soon as you know everything's the world is you know not so broken and yeah, you, uh, things you guys are supposed to have again. a concert in uh, i believe it's november or just and it was december in new york uh of 2020 you guys were supposed to have a concert i believe and i got canceled. yeah we had to move it so we've moved it to this october so fingers crossed everything's going to be all, all good for that so yeah we'll, we'll see you know it's just been tough time for everyone in the in the music industry especially you know I had a lot of my solo shows were just cancelled last year and the BB Mac tour and, and all, everything. It's been, it's been tough for the, for, you know, for the music industry and the whole of the hospitality entertainment industry. It's been tough. So yeah. Um, but we're hopeful, hopeful for 2021. So well, I will be there front row. Uh, I, I ended up um, driving to California for the concert because I live in Arizona. I drove to the, drove to the, to California. The second I found out, I didn't check my bank account. I didn't do anything. I said, bye, 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 bye. <laughs> I just, I didn't care. I, I will absolutely 100% uh, be there to support you guys. Oh, amazing. Oh, Look forward to it. I remember I went to Disney World for my 16th birthday mm -hmm. in Florida and I lived in Missouri at the time and we drove from Missouri to Florida and it was me and uh, my best friend and my mom. And I, I would just never forget my mom said, you know, I love BB Mac, but if I had to listen to that album one more time, <laughs> one more I was time. going to throw it out the window. I'm going to in the car. <laughs> I remember the days of putting the CD in the car. I kind of miss that. I kind of miss just having yeah. the CD. I still have my, my all my Beatles Max. You know what? It's true. People miss having that physical product. You know. So I mean, I'm I'm doing I'm making some gorgeous limited edition vinyl for my next solo album, which is going to be. It, it, this is called Love Songs from Suburbia. It's going to be out in a. I'd say in a couple of months. So I'd say. April. Let's say April. Um, my birthday just in time. So I'm going to really. I've got this beautiful um vinyl um but again you know people are going to be able to get it and it's a physical thing you know i think people miss that you know having that tactile thing to hold and and uh you know physical goods and pictures to look at and stuff to read so yeah i'm excited to share that with everyone 
Where I'm excited to share the album, but the vinyl, I'm more excited about. I love vinyl. So Christian, where can everybody find out more information about the new album? And as well as I saw on um, your Instagram mentioning of Record Ready Vocals. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, you can, well, first of all, you can follow me on Instagram at Christian Burns underscore, um, or you can even head over to ChristianBurns.com. Um, but yeah, Record Ready Vocals is... Um, something I've been working on for a couple of years, well, something I've been working on for 20 years. It's, uh, it's my first online course. Um, and it basically, it, it teaches people how to record vocals professionally at home. So if you're a singer, songwriter, or a producer, um, you can you know, do this course and it will take your vocal game up to, you know, the, up to the pro level. Um, whether you're a beginner or you know, you're an experienced producer, um, and the, the, behind, you know, musicians are struggling at the moment. Moment, I know that, and I've had a lot of time in lockdown to work on stuff. Um, and I think, you know, it's about empowering artists. You know, so if I can empower you to learn all this this skill set of producing your own vocals, so you can do it from home, so you don't have to, you know, go to a studio because people can't get out at the moment. They can't get out. They can't go to studios. They can't go and meet a producer and go and record vocals. Um, so, you know, it's just giving artists that, that power to do things themselves. And, you know, you're in control of your own destiny there, you know. So I think uh, it's been really successful. And it's something, you know, I, I've, what, I, it, it's the course I would have killed to have got my hands on, you know, not just at the beginning of my journey, but any time through my journey, you know. It's, um, it's all my knowledge, 20 years worth of knowledge in, in, in love, I've gone into this course. I've put my heart and soul into this course. And, you know, I only launched it in December and I've, I've already got about, you know, I think I've got about 40 people have gone through it so far. And I'm starting to get the first people through of finishing the course. And it's, it's, been, it's been really unexpected for me because I didn't realize I was going to get this such a great feeling because I've got these testimonies of people now. People are saying, oh, I'm going to give you a testimony. I'm saying, that's great. And the, the really overjoyed with the results they're getting and you know for me I didn't realize this feeling I would get this amazing feeling you know I've, I've missed touring I've missed that connection with the crowd and that feeling you get when you're performing and people are loving this this show and like it's just this amazing positive feedback loop and you know uh, unexpected to me I've been getting these testimonials and it's just been such a great feeling for me to to know that I've been helping these musicians and you know taking giving them this skill set that will last a lifetime so it's been amazing, yeah. Um, it's gone so well. It's just the beginning for me. I'm working on some other stuff as well. So I'm working on another one called Record Ready Songs, which is a songwriting course. So it's been amazing uh, to dive into that. And I've met some amazing artists um, as I'm developing some artists as well at the same time, because me and BT, my good friend BT, we're launching our new record label uh, in, in the very near future. So we've already signed a few people and we're, we're developing them as well. So it's just been a really great thing for me to do. And yeah, I didn't realize how, how rewarding it would be for me. So yeah, I've loved it. And it's, it's kept me, it's kept me sane during lock time. You know, I've been doing lots of Zooms with people and just connecting with some amazing people. And, you know, I'm so passionate about music. Music's been, been such a gift for me in my whole life. It's been there for me through all, all, you know, all the bad times I've had. It's always been there as a comfort and it's been there in the good times as well. And I think it's my responsibility to share that knowledge with everyone. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. So yeah, if you can, if you want to check out about it, you can go to recordreadyacademy.com and uh, there's all the details about record ready vocals are there. So you can check it out, but yeah, I've absolutely loved, you know, doing the, it's a new thing for me, but I've loved it. Absolutely. I have loved learning all these new things and checking out all these new things during quarantine. It's so awesome to see the positive that's coming out of it. You know, these, these programs and these passion projects and stuff that people have had inside of them for so long and just didn't make time for. I think it's awesome. And for the record, your music has comforted me a lot too. So it's a two-way street there. Um, oh, well, but thank you. 
guys, I'm going to link all of that below if you want to check it out. Uh, it's awesome. I've actually kind of peeped a little bit at these <laughs> programs and it's super awesome. So for anyone that is looking to take their, their quarantine skills to the next uh, level or take their singing songwriting skills to the next level, make sure to check it out. I'm also going to link BB Max website so you can uh, check out their album that had dropped in 2019, right? It was 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My ears are just getting lost in all of this. <laughs> All the days are molding into one. All the years are morphing into one. So <laughs> I was, the last year, somebody had said, "What month is it?" I said, uh, "March, February." I don't even know anymore. I felt <laughs> like it was. It still felt like March or April, but it was really about November. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, I'm going to link all of that yeah, below yeah. so you guys can check it out. And if you have never, if you are one of the uncultured people out there that have never listened to BB Mac, you absolutely have to check it out. Share this little piece of my world with me because they are so amazing, so talented. It's music that we were all missing in this world. This world missed you, Christian. We missed you. <laughs> Well, it's great. It's our pleasure to be back and we're loving creating new music. And in fact, we've, we've, got, we've got some amazing new stuff on the boil, which is, I won't say too much now, um, but it's coming. So, you know, it's been difficult for us to kind of get together during lockdown because of restrictions, but we've been working like remotely and sending stuff. So we've got some stuff cooking and yeah, I'm excited to share more BB Mac music with you in the future. Are you guys still on full lockdown there? Yeah, we're still on oh. full lockdown in the UK. We're, we're locked in, you know, so. Yeah, here we, we it's dependent on the state, but um, here we're, yeah. we're a little bit more open, but California and New York are still, oh, there's nothing. You, yeah, no, it's, it's, just, it's, it's tough, yeah. So there's no mixing with, with other people, really, apart from your own bubble. Um, and yeah, we can't go anywhere. And if you do go abroad or anything, you've got to do like 14 days quarantine or 10 days quarantine when you come back, so. Um, yeah, everyone's kind of just, you know, at home at the moment, um, you know, and all, even the gyms are shut and everything. So it's just, you can, all I do is get out. I get, I get out for a walk, you know, every day, get some fresh air. Ah, get some fresh air, get that exercise. Yeah, there it's is. good. It's good to get out. You've got to get out, you know, as much yeah. as I love creating and being in the studio, it's good to get out and just get some fresh air, you know, so I'm lucky where I am. I'm in the countryside. So there's some great places to go. Absolutely. Yeah. It's kind of a little rough in the city to get fresh air, but as fresh as you can get, <laughs> depending if you're in LA, I don't even know what fresh air is there, but get the best that you can, <laughs> right? Yeah. Do the what, best you can. What would you, um, what do you want to hear from, from the people on this, on this uh, video? Do you want to hear their stories? Cause I think that we should be sharing. Like I said, I want to hear the stories of people that have gone through major changes like you have and managed to kind of come out on the other side. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's important. I think anything that someone else can relate to and go, ah, oh, that was kind of my story. So I, I, I know you're getting lots of different people to, to guest on, you know, this series. So I think you're doing the right thing. And, you know, the more different people you can get on there, different ages, the more people you can, can relate to, you know, to that and um i think you know ultimately if if one of the videos speaks to someone uh more than another one and it makes them take action and do something about it and go and get help well that's that's a it's a good thing you know so and if you're watching this and you have a story to share, please do so in the comments below. Let's keep this conversation going. That's how we break the mental health stigma. That's how we're going to move forward in this movement. That's how we're all going to move forward with our mental health, even though, like you said, we're struggling right now. Everybody's struggling in some way right now, but connecting yeah. with each other, sharing our stories, talking, being there for each other. That's how we're going to do that. So after you like, subscribe, and share this video, make sure to leave your story and experience in the comments below. Christian, thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your story and experiences. Is there anything that you want to leave uh, with the listeners or anything that you feel like you didn't get to share? No, I just say, you know, well, I want to touch on what you just said. I think it's important. Just, I know everyone's kind of not, you know, not being social at the moment and can't see people. But just, you know, even like Zoom some of your friends that you don't speak to, you know, that you don't, you've not spoke to for a while. Stay in touch with people. You know, don't just be, stay in your, in your bubble and make sure you reach out to people and check on them. You know, check on that friend you've not heard from for a while. Um, I, I know I've been doing that. I've been, I've Same. had recent conversations I've, I've been calling them a brew and a Zoom. I've been calling them brooms. <laughs> but I've been having these, these Zoom conversations <laughs> and a cup of coffee with some of my old school friends, you know, some old, 
musicians I've not seen with for years and just being just, you know, actively making an effort to reach out to people and not just for them, but for me as well, you know, it just, it's works both ways, but I think it's, it's a great thing. So I think more than ever, be aware of that. If you're not speaking to many people anymore, you know, make, make maybe do something about that and start to, you know, text your friend and just say, Hey, fancy a cup of coffee in a zoom, um, you know, and just do, do as much as that as you can. Cause I think it all helps definitely with your mental health. It really does. I think that I've connected with people that I hadn't talked to in so, so long. Uh, I've had, you know, more close conversations with my friends because I feel like I kind of overcompensated and went, you know what, I really need to talk to people right now. So I went the opposite direction of, you know, kind of confining myself and just going, oh my God, and getting this bubble. I just went, everybody make a Zoom call with me right now. I need to talk to you. I'm bored. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, that, no, that's good. That's good. You it know, is. and so I know some people don't do that. And, you know, some people might not be as outgoing as you are and might not have, you know, have that just in them to normally do in normal life. But in normal life, you know, you see people, you see people every day and you're out and about. But if you're working from home and you're not going out, uh, you know, so I think it's important. So make an effort uh, if you're not, if you're not, you know, if you're not already doing that, uh, make an effort. Or how about we go back to the late 90s and early 2000s and we send a real letter or care package to someone we care about. (laughs) I actually did. I sent a couple care packages to friends and it still means so much to people just to get that physical letter. You know what we're talking about, the physical album, being able to have something to hold on to because we have no real physical connection right now. I don't think it's social distancing. I think it's physical distancing. So we're kind of having that physical distance. And I think you don't realize how much you miss it. Even strong people are feeling the weight of it now, you know? So I think it's just something that can creep up. And uh, I think just do all you can to stay in communication, you know, to stay in touch with people. Absolutely. Yeah. No matter what it is, just find a way to connect yeah. because we're humans. We're, we're pack. We're, we're like the wolves, you know, we're pack creatures. Yeah. We like to be part of something. We like to have our little circle. So absolutely excellent advice. Make sure that you're staying connected during this time. And again, Christian, thank you so much for joining us here today Pleasure. and being so open and sharing your story. Thank you. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon. And bye bye everyone. Yeah, bye. Thank you guys so much for watching. What? <laughs>